Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Sophia, your host. Malcolm X rose from the depths of prison to international renown. His story is a lesson in the power of transformation. What inspired Malcolm X to change? How did he revise his personal beliefs and purpose over time? And what personal qualities did he have that made reinvention possible? In studio with us today is Imam Yassin Dwyer. Imam Yassin is a chaplain at Correctional Services Canada. He'll share with us how he thinks the story of Malcolm X can serve as an inspiration for people in prison. Imam Yassin, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Thank you for having me. Now, how did Malcolm X um, end up in prison? Malcolm X was born into a racist environment, an environment that was based upon the principles of white supremacy. And as a black American, he was the victim of that system. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Because we don't live in a society like that today, so sometimes it's hard to understand the injustice that m he may have experienced. Well, the black community in America, as the black community in the West, is a community that is born out of enslavement, that uh, the black community in this part of the world uh, are from Africa. And they were enslaved and brought to this part of the world. And eventually, a quote-unquote liberation took place. However, the effects of the system of slavery among black people in this part of the world um, were felt for generations to come, even up until today. So Malcolm X was born in an America that inherited that system. Mm -hmm. And so there was a system of uh, extreme uh, racial segregation, uh, extreme racial discrimination targeting black people um, that he and his family suffered from and black Americans during that time suffered from greatly. Mm -hmm. I believe his father was also killed um, by racists. His father was a very conscious black American who was a member of a very famous uh, black um, uh, improvement organization called the Universal Negro Improvement Association. He was actually a uh, a very prominent member of that organization. So he was someone who was very independent minded, very racially conscious, very conscious of the effects of racism in America. and. Because of that activity, it's believed that he actually was murdered by a white supremacist group. So Malcolm X grew up in this kind of environment, although he grew up in a very racially conscious family, but the murder of his father uh, had, a, uh, had a very uh, negative impact upon him, upon his brothers and sisters, and in particular upon his mother. Mm -hmm. I, I remember at, at one point when I was reading about him, I, I read that he, he, he actually wanted to become a lawyer. But his teacher told him, look, realize who you are, you know, what your race is, and you know, you're probably fit to be a carpenter. A very he famous like story. That. Very yeah. famous story. Malcolm X had the gift of speech as a young child. He had the gift of a, a, of a, of a, a, a wonderful, sharp intellect. And he wanted to be a lawyer. He aspired to be a lawyer. Anyone who, is, uh, who has those kind of skills as a young person would want to aspire to, to be a lawyer. But his teacher who was white at the time told him that you know you should aspire to be something else because you know your own people would not trust you as a black lawyer and white people at that time would not hire you as as a lawyer so you should aspire to be a carpenter so malcolm x had the spirit of learning the spirit of um uh, of of, of uh, education or the desire to be educated but you know uh, I heard one person describe it as like uh, putting Novocaine in the brain of, mm. of, of a young child that aspires to greatness so you could say that from that time Malcolm X um, uh, lost his motivation and you could say he began uh, adopting some of the self-destructive behaviors that many perhaps would adopt if they didn't have much hope or they weren't uh, given uh, an optimistic outlook of uh, uh, concerning their potential mm -hmm. to succeed in life. Yeah. So he dropped out um, and, and then he, he turned to a life of crime it seems. Yes, it seems that, he, well he dropped out of school in grade 8 and uh, from there, you know, the downward spiral began mm -hmm. and Malcolm and he X, ended up in jail. he ended up in jail. He involved himself in a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, criminal activity that eventually got him uh, arrested and convicted and sentenced to, uh, to prison. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So his time in prison was, was a turning point. He, he, it's, it seems like he revised some of his ideas in prison. Can you can tell us about what happened in prison? When he first entered prison, it was difficult. Uh, Malcolm X, while he was in prison, was uh, looked upon as, uh, in fact, his nickname while he was in prison was Satan. <laughs> uh, the other inmates used to call him Satan. He, in fact, was uh, a very difficult person to deal with, to get along with, and someone who was identified as very anti-religious. He didn't have much patience for religion. He was very angry, very bitter, very jaded. But what happened while he was in prison, his brother was a member or joined a movement called the Lost Found Nation of Islam. And his brother wrote Malcolm letters inviting him to join the Nation of Islam. And if he did join the Nation of Islam, he would get out of prison. So Malcolm X was very you know, puzzled by this letter because he didn't understand what this Nation of Islam was all about. Who is this man named Elijah Muhammad, whom they were claiming was a divine messenger? All of these things were confusing to Malcolm, but Malcolm opened his ears and opened his heart to, what, uh, to the letters of his brother, and he eventually made the decision to join this movement called the Nation of Islam. Although, as Muslims, there are some difficulties concerning the belief within this movement called the Nation of Islam. But Malcolm X, nonetheless, was given an introduction to this group, and he, uh, again, returned to that spirit of learning, that spirit of inquiry, and we're told in the sources that Malcolm X, you know, uh, in his desire to to uh, start back from where he left off in grade eight, he read the dictionary. <laughs> and in fact, some say that he may have memorized the dictionary. He began with the word aardvark, and he began to study words, meanings, syntax, grammar, all of these things. He returned uh, to learning about the world. He went to the prison library and read about you know, Greek philosophy, read about history, read about everything. So his and enthusiasm and passion seem to have returned then. Absolutely. It seems as though the message of his brother through the Nation of Islam actually, you know, um, uh, quickened his spirit uh, to learn and to um, uh, become, you know, a magnet of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So how did he rise um, to fame with the Nation of Islam? He left prison, I believe, in 1952. and. Uh, rose up the ranks of the Nation of Islam. When he left prison, the Nation of Islam perhaps had 500 members across America. Malcolm X became a minister quite quickly because he had the skills to attract and, as Nation of Islam members used to say, to fish converts. He was very eloquent. He was incredibly eloquent. And he was able to capture the imagination of many black Americans. And it began with perhaps 500 members, but perhaps by the time that he left the Nation of Islam, it may ha have had, you know, in the hundreds of thousands of members, primarily because of Malcolm X's oratory, his eloquence, and the sincerity that he had. Mm -hmm. uh, black Americans perceived, and even white Americans who may have disagreed with, you know, the content of the me message of the Nation of Islam, uh, they seemed to recognize a, a, a sincerity and an intellectual sharpness that Malcolm had. Yeah, mm -hmm. So he, he was able to rise uh, in the ranks of the Nation of Islam, capture the imagination of the American public, and um, the media caught hold of Malcolm because Malcolm always had something very interesting to say. Um, and he uh, caught the attention of even many international leaders as well. So he really, his, his fame was built through uh, the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. How do you think his involvement with the Nation of Islam helped in, in terms of his personal development? Well, of course, the Nation of Islam had uh, some very, uh, very strict teachings concerning um, uh, your, own per your own life, uh, very strict dietary habits. There were habits that, although we can't say were completely Quranic, um, however, did promote certain uh, virtues that, that, that were, that were uh, of benefit to him and many other members of the Nation of Islam. We can look at the Nation of Islam as perhaps like a proto-Islamic group. They use the symbols of Islam, but the actual belief system uh, was, not, was not Quranic. So as Muslims, we believe that there is one God. Um, however, the Nation of Islam believed that uh, God is manifested in 
human beings, that man is God and God mm -hmm. is man, although not every man, black man only. <laughs> so this is something that actually contradicts the Quranic teachings. And also, they believed as well that uh, a man by the name of Elijah Muhammad, who I mentioned earlier, was a messenger of God. This is, uh, uh, this is contrary. This is uh, antithetical to what Muslims believe. We believe that uh, Muhammad, uh, the son of Abdullah, on whom be peace, is in fact not only the messenger of God, but the last messenger of God. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we can refer to the Nation of Islam as a proto-Islamic group, not completely Islamic, but there were certain virtues that were taught within the Nation of Islam that actually helped many black Americans reform their life and actually, like Mal Malcolm, um, uh, cure themselves of certain vices that um, led them to a path of destruction. Mm -hmm. Now, you talked about how the Nation of Islam has this emphasis on, on the black man. Um, how did Malcolm X enlarge his focus to include whites as well? Well, Malcolm X uh, found some difficulty within the Nation of Islam. He had a conflict with uh, his teacher, Elijah Muhammad, and he was eventually kicked out of the Nation of Islam. However, before he was kicked out of the Nation of Islam, he had been studying traditional Islam, Islam of the Qur'an, for quite some time. In fact, he and a son of Elijah Muhammad, Warath al-Din Muhammad, who eventually took over the Nation of Islam when Elijah Muhammad died, um, were also, uh, he himself was also um, a student of traditional Islam. So there was that you know, stream of thought among many members of the Nation of Islam, including uh, those within Elijah Muhammad's family. But Malcolm X, because of a problem that, was, um, that he had with Elijah Muhammad and because of certain jealousies that took place within the leadership of the Nation of Islam, Malcolm X uh, uh, was kicked out and eventually he was given the opportunity by his sister, who at that time was an Orthodox Muslim, to go for the pilgrimage to Mecca, which Muslims are required to do at least once in a lifetime if they're able. He went for the pilgrimage to Mecca. So what happened then? How did that change him? Well, I would advise your viewers to actually uh, read uh, Malcolm X's autobiography, and there's one chapter named Mecca. And I couldn't do justice to actually the beauty and the uh, illumination that took place uh, within Malcolm X's heart um, while he was in Mecca. But in general, Malcolm went to Mecca, and he was able to, on a practical level, uh, witness uh, what Islam was really all about the brotherhood, the fraternity, the spiritual beauty, uh, the happiness, the joy, the begging, the, t the, the, the crying, the tears for God. He was able to witness this while in Mecca. In fact, a very famous uh, statement he made uh, in his autobiography that when he went to Mecca, he was able to recognize that although we do have black, we have white, we have yellow, we have red, every human being snores in the same language. <laughs> so he was able to recognize that indeed, you know, uh, racism is a reality, but he said the cure, the cure to racial intolerance, to racial violence, uh, must be a spiritual cure. And he believed that Islam, Islam had the answer to that. In fact, the Quran says, oh humanity, we made you from male and female, we made you into nations and tribes, so that you may recognize each other, so that you may know each other. Verily, the most honored of you, the most virtuous of you, are those who have this wonderful thing called taqwa, which means God consciousness and awareness of God. So our superiority or inferiority is based upon our sense of God consciousness. And Malcolm X was able to recognize that, and he was able to return from his pilgrimage and speak of this wonderful tradition and at the same time continue to be an advocate for racial justice in America but of course of course in his heart understanding that racism is that which is learnt it is not something that is natural in a human being so you could sum up Malcolm X's life by saying uh, that we need to keep our hearts busy with God and, and keep our hands busy with the people Imam Yassin, I can see how inspired you are by Malcolm X. Thank you for sharing your stories with us, and thank you for appearing on our show. Thank you for having me. We'll take a break. When we return, we will look at the threat of antibiotic resistance.